Namaskar. We welcome you to our well-being series today. We have Ms. Harini joining us. I would like her to share about her journey on what well-being means to her and what she is doing at work with regards to the same. Harini, over to you. Thank you so much for having me over, uh, Navina. It's a very interesting topic to begin with. Uh, it's about well-being because I think that is very much the need of the hour today. Um, the work that I do at Semco Style Institute is pretty much around working with human behaviors at the workplace and how these behaviors actually translate to business outcomes. Now, very interestingly, looking at this entire uh, the work that we do, uh, creating happy workplaces towards high-performing teams, it involves a lot of wellness and well-being. Now, the wellness aspect of it is pretty easy and obvious, but when it comes to well-being, what it really means is, are people coming to work with sound mind? Are people coming to work, bringing themselves entirely to the workplace, so on and so forth? So I've had a very interesting journey. I have been in, uh, you know, been on the pharmaceutical manufacturing research and development side for a while. Then I moved on to HR, been in HR for a long time. And now I work with multiple organizations towards creating happy workplaces, which result in high performing workplaces. So this entire journey, I have experienced that when people bring their entire selves to the workplace, better business outcomes are achieved. So it's like, you know, hitting uh, two birds with one stone because you're just focusing on, on people and how happy they are. And you're actually, you're creating pla workplaces with well-being, happiness, and also workplaces that are high performing. So for me, if I work on just letting people bring their entire selves to the workplace. I think we have happy people and high performing. Thank you for that update there. Um, this is a well-being discussion and we are talking about well-being here and what you do at uh, your workplace with regards to well-being. I would like to know what do you do for well-being on a daily basis, meaning what does well-being mean to you? Uh, for me, well-being actually starts with uh, having having a very clear mind uh, to be able to take uh, decisions uh, at the right time and the right decisions. So, you know, that starts with being very, very clear. Uh, what do you say? So start of the day has to be absolutely great. So my practice of well-being for me is to start my day with a morning walk uh, in the midst of nature. So I don't prefer to walk in the concrete jungle, I try to go out. Uh, I fortunately stay in the foothills uh, of uh, the, the Yeur Hills. So I go there and spend a lot of time in the midst of nature. And inhaling the right kind of oxygen in the morning, which is very, very pure, and in the midst of nature, I think it's, it clears my mind of a lot of clutter. So once the day starts like that, it brings in a lot of energy. It brings in a lot of energy and that is what keeps the rest of the day going. Now, when I get to the workplace with that kind of a mind, which is free of clutter, I think even when I enter in the midst of a crisis, I don't have a problem because my mind is already ready to be able to think rationally and come up with solutions for the crisis, right? So I think starting the day with clearing the mind is, is probably my best and the simplest practice for well-being. I really don't need to do anything else. Other. I agree with you on that. Physical activity or any kind of physical workout early in the morning really clears your mind completely. And you're able to continue your work with a clear mind and you're able to take good decisions and move on. Yes. You're not only able Absolutely. to help yourself, but uh, you're able to help others who come into your organization who come and ask you for help. So yes. that said, 
uh, how do you take care of well being at your workplace and at your home so one is putting the right kind of some kind of a discipline uh, in your lifestyle you know i i encourage that whether it is my family members or my friends or my colleagues uh, what i have noticed is that I don't really, you know, try to push for some kind of a very rigid discipline. But I say that if you have a kind of a routine without too much deviation from it, without being random, I would say, not even a routine. Don't be random. If you're not random and if you don't overindulge, uh, definitely it results in wellness and also it results in well-being. Because you know, overindulgence in anything, any activity or any food or overindulgence in anything, any habit, to the extent that and over indulgence becomes a kind of an addiction that works uh, in a very negative manner in your well being it completely distorts your personality so i think not being random uh, having some kind of a discipline of what you do every day when you do things every day and not indulging anything beyond a certain point staying within the limit of everything is probably the best thing that i would advocate whether it is home whether it's it's my family my children uh, or whether it's the workplace i think that's what it is so even when it comes to having fun at the workplace i would normally say that don't overdo it right so uh, you know if you're getting stressed also it's like don't take it to an extreme where you wear stress like a badge of honor so you should be able to balance between the two uh, and you know do things so if you start putting yourself in a routine in a discipline i think everything falls in place uh, what do you do when uh, when you find yourself in a very stressful spot um so if i am in a situation at work which is very stressful and i'm not able to find a solution at that time i take a pause uh there's no point when the mind is already cluttered when the mind is already cloudy with a lot of thoughts uh the kind of a mental block that happens there's no point in trying to fight it out it doesn't work invariably so in such situations i take a pause i consciously pull myself out of the situation uh, conscious of the fact that there could be a delay in resolving this or whatever i keep the necessary stakeholders invo- involved uh, informed of the delay that could possibly happen i take a pause and i do something which is absolutely is stressing enough for me to declutter my mind so it could be a long walk it could be listening to uh, music anything that is therapeutic uh, you know i i don't have hobbies which are very therapeutic for example for some people cooking is therapeutic for some people shopping is therapeutic for me it doesn't work it causes causes more stress so i do things which are therapeutic for me uh, not thinking about the stressful situation at all from somewhere or the other i'm able to find solutions to that problem and that stressful situation is taken care of but at the same time i've even done the mistake of trying to solve it first and then take a break but let me tell you every time that that fails it doesn't work when i'm stressed even if the right solution is standing there in front of me i somehow miss it so it's the moment you acknowledge that you're stressed i think it's better to take a step back pause do something that is therapeutic reflect and you'll get the answer the solution is to refocus when we step back and refocus on what we need to do the solution comes up better in our mind and we are able to carry on with our day and solve the problem ahead of us so you also mentioned that you would like to keep yourself positive when you are facing situations at work or when you are facing people when you are facing clients you have to remain positive what do you do to remain positive or in a state of well being on a daily basis i think naturally or maybe over the period of time i evolved as somebody who looks for solutions so rather than stating and restating the problem uh i would look for a solution so there's no point in talking about the problem so look at a solution and once solutioning or approaching something with a solutions mindset or a growth mindset as we call it if that becomes a habit i think staying positive also becomes a habit when does one really become a negative person or a pessimist is when you are not able to see the brighter side of things you know even when there is a huge failure uh, at work or i was attempting to coach somebody a uh, very promising person but somewhere there was a huge failure and that coaching relationship did not work 
whatever you know uh, if the if the outcome has not been good i would still look at the positive side of it saying it's good that i failed early okay now that i have failed early let me try and see what i can do so that i don't fail in the next attempt and that's a solution mindset that's a growth mindset rather than sit and brood about i have failed uh and why me i would rather say it's good that I, it's good that i failed early and now let me do something better something different so that i don't fail again so i think looking at a solution searching for a solution even in failures is something that makes me positive taking it in a stride when you take it in a stride you're able to perform better everything is a learning process right yeah and and not just taking it in a stride i think i very consciously look for solutions uh it's okay for me if i feel that i don't have all the answers it doesn't matter but looking for answers sometimes gives you a decent enough headway into where the solution could be and then you can leverage on people around you take their support and find out those solutions but if you blind your eyes and refuse to look at the brighter side of things i think that's where the problem is yeah but let me also confess to you that i'm human so therefore there are times when i also play victim uh, it will it will be uh, it will be absolutely wrong for me to claim that i never play victim there are times when i also play victim but i become very conscious that i'm playing victim and i tell myself no i shouldn't do that and i should look for solution yeah but there are times it's it is very human to err but then when you realize what you are going through and then you come out of it consciously that's what all it matters end of the day so we are yes. learning uh, on a daily basis we learn from each other we learn from everybody we see everybody is a teacher so what is your view what do you think the state of well being is around the people around you and around the world right now as on day you know the the pandemic has really caused a lot of concern uh, in the matters of well being wellness of course because directly it was impacting health so therefore there has been uh, it has definitely been a matter of global concern but a lot of uncertainty has come up big time in people's minds and uh, the, the sad part is you know lots of students who were in their milestone years the year 2020 the year 2021 they were graduating or they were just coming out of high school or they were about to get placed in their first jobs those are people who were at an emotional high because it was a milestone year and when they were at an emotional high when the pandemic struck it came became a very big blow to them so they actually fell from that height of being emotionally high to the the deepest and the darkest point of uncertainty mm-hmm. that fluctuation has definitely resulted in a lot of damage to well being of people um uh, why i am saying this you know with a lot of concern is i have a lot of interaction with the student community and a lot of very young professionals who have not been able to start big they work in small organizations they are trying to make their way up they don't come from premier institutes so on and so forth but they are the kind of people who reach out to me and i think they are the ones who need the maximum support because they feel very insecure i spend hours and hours every day uh, responding to every call that i get every message that i get uh, you must also be noticing that i'm very prompt in responding to messages when people reach out to me the best i can do is promptly respond to them and lend them a ear i've been trying to do that but unfortunately what i am noticing is that many people are losing their grip on life there's a lot of mental health situations that people are going through uh and i'm i'm right now supporting my daughter who's who's also starting with a mental health awareness campaign because she feels that students of her age are the ones who need it and she's she's driving that campaign and i'm supporting her definitely it's a matter of concern and the more we do to get people into the well being zone uh, the better would be our contribution to society that's very good that your daughter has also started uh, coming into the wellness cycle and she wants to go ahead with the creating well being to the students of her own age and has created an awareness program 
all the best to her uh, so the last question of the day i would like to ask you is what is the message you would like to give uh, to the viewers today one simple message is uh, i think we have to take life as it comes right so there's no point uh, grumbling about what went wrong so try to look at what could be made better that's one the second thing is i i often write about these conversations between head heart and soul so one such message of mine which is which is a conversation that i wrote about uh, is is this that uh, stay on a little and make memories at the head right stay on a little and make memories at the head stay on a little and make your presence felt said the heart lend your hand and make memories for others said the soul so it's more about it's not only you are there in that moment in making your presence felt and even that's not enough now i think we have to consciously step forward and lend a hand to people who are not in in the in the perfect state of well being so that's my message to everyone one is look at yourself and try to look at what can be better and not what was bad or what was wrong at the same time look out for people around and listen to your soul and lend a hand to others so that's that's my message to everyone thank you so much for this wonderful message that you have delivered to all of us today uh thank you once again harini for joining us it's been a, a pleasure having you on our wellbeing series namaskar absolutely namina thanks a lot once again and take care